Question 1.2. Give the correct biological term for each of the following descriptions. Now, the layer in the atmosphere that protects living organisms from ultraviolet rays of the sun is the ozone. And you would have learnt about this in grade two or three already. Okay, so it's the ozone. And where there is a hole in the ozone is what causes issues. So the ozone protects us. The illegal hunting and killing of animals, well, we all know that is poaching. Okay, and poachers yeah, should all be caught and put in jail for a long time. A condition of a cell, okay, so it's in the cell, where there is only one set of chromosomes is haploid. Remember, in your body, you are diploid. Why? Di means two. So diploid means two sets of chromosomes. You've got one maternal set from your mom and one paternal set from your dad. And that makes the two sets, which gives you your 46 pairs of chromosomes. So when you have one set, there are only 23 chromosomes. When there are two sets, there'll be 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. And that makes it haploid. Diploid, two sets. Haploid, one set. And when does this happen? This happens because of meiosis. But that's just a little extra here for you to remember. The response of a part of the plant to a light stimulus. Anything to do with light is photo. And to move to light, to respond to that light, is going to be called phototropism. And geotropism would be when the plant responds to the pull of gravity. So photo, light, tropism, to respond, to move. A hormone that stimulates ovulation in humans is simple. It's secreted by the pituitary gland. It is just good old LH or luteinizing hormone. The part of the brain ha, that connects the left and the right hemispheres, it keeps them close. And that's how you remember it. It's called the corpus callosum. It keeps the left and the right hemispheres close. Okay, so it's the corpus callosum. I mean, how easy is this, guys? Now, blood vessels, the blood vessel, sorry, that transports deoxygenated blood, so it's blood carrying carbon dioxide, from the fetus to the placenta, okay, is going to be the umbilical artery. Now, why the artery when it's carrying deoxygenated blood? It's simple. It is leaving the fetus's heart. And the rule is any vessel that leaves and takes blood away from the heart is always called an artery. So here, the fetus's blood system carries the deoxygenated blood away from the fetus back to the placenta. So it's via the umbilical structure and it will be the artery because it moves away from the fetus. So it's an artery. And by the same token, the umbilical vein will carry oxygen and nutrients to the fetus because it moves from the placenta to the fetus's heart. And anything entering the heart is always a vein. So arteries, A for away, veins to the heart. Okay, a small device inserted in the ear to drain fluids from the middle ear is called a grommet. And it looks like a little dumbbell. Looks like this. And it's got a little hole and a little channel that goes all the way through it. And here it fits inside the eardrum. So this would be half of the eardrum and that would be the other half of the eardrum. So that fluid from the middle ear, okay, the M ear, can then drain out into the outer ear. Okay. 
I suppose I shouldn't put M here. Let's just quickly fix this. <laughs> if somebody sees that, they say, ah, what's the M here? It's the middle. You write it up. Yeah. Okay. And this would then take it to the outer ear, to the outside. All right, so that's the fluid that would be drained. And they normally do it when, when, when children are very little because they keep getting, getting ear infections. Why? The eustachian tube is very short. So your bacteria and your bugs go up into the eustachian tube, into the middle ear, and start to cause infections. And that builds up um, fluid and, and mucus and pus in the middle ear, and it must be drained out. Otherwise, they can't hear properly. The branch of the autonomic nervous system that restores an increased heart rate back to normal. So it goes from high, increased, to normal. That is going to be the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. Remember, the autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts. You've got the parasympathetic nervous system, which calms the organs down, and the sympathetic nervous system, which, just think sympathetic starts with an S, it stimulates the organs. So if you're going to do exercise, your sympathetic nervous system is stimulated so that everything starts working faster. And then those same organs have a whole bunch of nerves that come in from the parasympathetic nervous system and it calms them down back to normal when you are done. Okay, and your autonomic nervous system, that's why it's called a, a double innovation system because you've got for one organ, or for every organ in your body, but each organ will have a set of sympathetic nerves and a set of parasympathetic nerves. Sympathetic to stimulate, parasympathetic to calm down, to restore to normal. Okay, the structure in the eye that absorbs light to prevent internal reflection, that is the choroid layer. It's the middle layer. The white layer is the sclera, that's your fibrous protective layer. Then you've got the choroid layer, which extends into the iris. And it's filled with brown pigment and lots of blood vessels. And its job is to absorb excess light. Because if it doesn't, you'll just see little colored stars all the time as the light bounces around in your eye. So it's the choroid layer. Okay, 